Now, if you guys have been following my channel for a long time, then you know that Disney stock has been one of my largest investments in my entire portfolio for many years, and it's currently my third largest stock overall. Well, if you're familiar with Disney, then you also know that it's been a very slow moving stock for a pretty long time now before finally breaking out last year. And that coupled with the stock market at record highs and their uh, recent investments into video streaming has left them with lower profitability and a much higher valuation. So am I still buying Disney stock or am I just holding or am I possibly even thinking about selling some of that stock and cashing in some of those profits, taking some of those profits off the table. Well, in today's video, we're going to do a recap on their business and their performance. We'll take a quick look at their stock and their valuation, and I'll try to answer some of those questions with my overall conclusion at the end of the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It should be a fun one. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ale. Welcome back to my world of stocks. All right, let's go ahead and start by taking a quick look at the stock and uh, the valuation, and I'll explain why it's at these higher levels. And we'll also talk about their shrinking profitability because I, I do think it's very important. And then we'll transition over to what I think their future will look like, uh, followed by my overall conclusion. So let's go ahead and start that right now. Okay, so taking a look at the stock, we can see that it's only up by less than 50% over the past five years, which is pretty surprising when you consider how many other stocks are up by like literally hundreds of percents during the same time, because because the stock market is essentially trading at record highs. And because I've continuously bought the stock by so much over the years, my cost basis is also not that great at around $100. So even for me as someone who is a very long term investor in Disney, I'm only up by around 40% of my position, which isn't really that much. For context, I barely started investing in stocks like Nvidia, Tesla and Abvi about a year or less ago. And I'm already up by much more on those stocks in terms of like an actual percentage, not as as a dollar value, but as a percentage. In fact, with Tesla, I'm already up by over 150%. And it's not really a small position either, as it already makes up around 13% of my portfolio. Anyway, I'm just trying to illustrate a point here that Disney is a slow mover that doesn't normally climb by very large amounts. That is until 2019, where the stock finally broke out like a rocket, thanks to the official reveal of their Disney Plus service, which uh, they had been talking a lot about before that, and it was one of the reasons why I was actually buying so heavily into the stock. But once they officially revealed all of the details and all the specifics, the stock ended up really taking off. In fact, it's it's climbed by around 42% in just the past year when you look at their 52-week low up to their 52-week high. And the result of that, unfortunately, is that the valuation has also taken off as well. Back in the first quarter of 2019, their PE ratio was only around 12. And I remember at that time, you guys probably remember too, that I was putting a lot of videos saying, hey, this valuation is like way too low for Disney. They deserve to trade for much higher than just a PE of 12. But uh, sure enough, the stock did end up taking off and fast forward to today, and that PE ratio has climbed all the way to over 20. For context, there appears to have been only one quarter since at least the mid 2000s where the PE ratio was higher than that, which makes it very understandable that so many people are asking whether it's too late to invest in Disney now. But what you need to understand about Disney is that it's a very long term foundational stock. So if you're just trying to make like a quick profit off of this one, I think it's going to be pretty difficult to predict those breakouts. But if we zoom out to the past decade, you can see that the stock has actually been very stable and has also climbed by a lot during that time. And it was mostly only since 2016 that they really started to struggle with a few years of stagnation. And I think a lot of that can be attributed to both macroeconomic issues and global weakness that Disney is heavily exposed to, but also the cord cutting movement as a result of the disruption caused by Netflix that really tanked their ratings in media networks like ABC and ESPN, both of which are owned by Disney. If we take a look at their revenue since 2005, there's really only been two times that it fell year over year, and that was during the last recession, and then again in 2017, which correlates perfectly with the way that the stock price has been performing. And that's when Disney said, okay, we need to either adapt to the changing market, or we're going to keep spiraling down the drain. And 
Thankfully, they chose to adapt by making one of the largest acquisitions in history and purchasing most 21st century Fox assets for a whopping $71 billion in 2019. And so that acquisition coupled with massive blockbuster movies that, by the way, are also thanks to other acquisitions like the ones that they made for global gigantic brands like Marvel and Star Wars has led to new growth in their sales that they're not really used to seeing. In fact, sales growth was only 6% in 2016, it dropped in 2017, climbed again by 8% in 2018, which was also right after a down year, so it was kind of easier to grow that year. But then in 2019, the revenue skyrocketed, growing by 17%, and that's still expected to continue growing the year after with estimates of another 17% this year. And by the way, that's after a huge growth year in 2019. So it's not really easy to keep growing by such a large amount, but you know that's thanks to these acquisitions and their new uh, video streaming services as well. The trade-off, however, has been profitability. See, transitioning such a large part of your business doesn't come cheap, and the result is that their EPS is expected to drop by as much as 6% this year before recovering to growth the year after, but that's already coming off of a 12% decline in net income last year. Granted, they are still profitable by billions of dollars, but the huge amount amounts of money that it's taking to transition is obviously going to tank their cash flows for the next few years as services like Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu are all not expected to be profitable until around 2024. And that heavy drop in profitability has caused their forward PE to climb to a ratio that is almost 20% higher than the sector median as a result. That's definitely not what you want to see if you're more of a value oriented investor. So one might argue that given the combination of a drop in profitability along with the recent run up in stock price resulting and a much higher valuation, this is starting to look like it may be time to uh, sell the stock and take profits. And look, if I was someone who didn't believe in Disney's future for the long term, and I was just kind of trying to make a short term play on all of the hype behind Disney Plus, which is understandable, or if I was someone who uh, just felt like a recession was right around the corner and I was really freaking out about how that would impact all of their theme parks and their studio business and all that kind of stuff, then yeah, right now might be a good time for me to be taking some profits off the table. But as someone who actually does believe in Disney's future and uh, has built Disney into one of my core foundational stocks that I use to really build my entire portfolio around, then selling right now I think might be a little short-sighted. And to understand why, we really need to cover uh, Disney's strength as a company and, and as a business and uh, we also need to talk about their future potential. So let's go ahead and do that now, and then we'll end the video with my overall conclusion, and I'll let you know what my plan is, uh, what I plan to do with the stock right now, and what I plan to do with it in the future. Well, the first thing that I think is important to understand about Disney is that they have an incredibly strong and diverse company with incredible brands that are unlikely to disappear anytime soon. From Marvel and Star Wars to all of the uh, family-friendly Disney content like Mickey Mouse, Aladdin, Lion King, Frozen, Pixar, and so on, all of which are helping fuel their Disney Plus service that gained over 10 million subscribers in its first day. To give you some context, that's more than HBO Now's total lifetime subs of 8 million and more than both CBS All Access and Showtime OTT combined. That's pretty crazy. Now, Disney said that they won't be giving updates until they report earnings, and about a year ago, they had projected around 60 to 90 million subs by the end of 2024, but due to the initial success of the platform coupled with hit shows like The Mandalorian and upcoming shows from both Marvel and Star Wars, including a new Obi-Wan Kenobi show that I'm personally really excited for myself, uh, and also coupled with the incredibly low price of the service at just $6.99 versus Netflix at $12.99, which doesn't even include 4K by the way, uh, all of that is leading to analysts predicting that Disney Plus will hit their subscriber goals much sooner than expected. And so if we're going through multiple quarters where Disney is consistently putting out amazing subscriber growth numbers, I think it's going to be hard for the stock to fall. I mean, Netflix has seen their stock soar by over 400% in the past five years, and that's despite them losing literally billions of dollars every single year in free cash flow, and they're still expected to lose another $2.5 billion this year as well. So clearly their whole reason for climbing has been their massive subscriber counts, which to be fair, they do have over uh, 60 million just in the United States alone and about 160 million worldwide, but that's taken them over a decade to achieve, whereas this analyst from Wedbush is predicting that Disney could reach the same amount of domestic subs uh, that Netflix has 
in just about two years. A lot of that is thanks to their low price points that this coin analyst thinks will make it an easy decision for consumers to sign up, especially parents, thanks to all of the kid-friendly contents. And that's something that I've been talking a lot about in previous videos as well. Now, one common argument that I often hear from the bear camp, and I think it's a reasonable one, is that Disney isn't creating enough original content exclusively for uh, Disney Plus. And once viewers run through all of the content, once they watch everything, they'll essentially cancel the service and move on to something else. However, I am not on board with that theory. And I'll give you the reasons why. Uh, primarily, there's really two reasons. And one is that I think that they completely ignored the fact that there is a ton of content being created outside of Disney Plus, and I'm talking movies and things like that, we'll look at it in a second, uh, that is being created outside of Disney Plus that will later get added to the service. So they will continuously have content coming in that is not even created exclusively for Disney Plus. But that also brings me to reason number two, which is that Disney has actually outlined a clear plan for creating original content exclusively for Disney Plus. In fact, starting with the former, if you include their acquisition of Fox, Disney accounted for nearly 40% of the entire US film market last year, which was up from just around 10% about a decade ago, so they continue to get more and more dominant. And the next closest competitor in Warner Brothers was only at around 13.8%, so they are by far the largest producer of movies, most of which can and will be put on the Disney Plus service after viewers have already had the opportunity to watch them in theaters. Theaters. And so that's just another reason to stay subscribed to the service, as I'm sure that most people aren't going to be watching every single Disney movie out there in the theater and may prefer to actually watch it exclusively on Disney Plus, which you won't be able to do on something like Netflix that also costs around double the price. And believe me, Disney is going to create more content for the platform because they're not idiots and they know the opportunities that lie there. In fact, they previously announced that by year five, they want to be producing at least 50 episodic series and 10 different movies every single year exclusively for the platform. So this is not movies and, and shows that are gonna be out on television or out in the theaters. This is exclusively for the Disney Plus service. And again, that's on top of everything else that will already be there and everything else that will continue to be added to the platform in the future. But Disney Plus isn't the only way that Disney is adapting to the changing market, as they're also investing heavily in ESPN Plus and Hulu, both of which are streaming services that can be bundled together with Disney Plus for just $12.99 a month. That's literally the same price as a standard version of Netflix, and that Hulu version also is also uh, ad supported, so they would also bring in digital advertising revenue as well, which is also another gigantic market to be uh, tapping into. And that'll only help their already high growth numbers for each platform, given that in their last quarter, subscriber counts for both platforms were growing at a faster rate than the company originally predicted. But all of this isn't even taking into account that Disney is not just a one trick pony. Yes, all of this is setting them up to be one of the largest players in the already gigantic and still growing video on demand market uh, that was worth about $25 billion last year and continues to get larger each year. But besides that, they still have an enormous blockbuster movies business that we talked about earlier. They own gigantic media networks like ABC, FX, and National Geographic, huge theme parks and resorts around the world, including the ones in California, Florida, Hawaii, Paris, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Tokyo. And they even have their own cruise line that is very popular, especially among vacationing families. And those sales broken down for the full year resulted in 13% growth for media networks. 6% for parks, 11% for studio, and over 100% growth for direct-to-consumer. And all the meanwhile, they continue to pay out a small but growing dividend that has grown every year for the past decade, which was when they started paying it. Now, they usually increase that dividend in December, which they didn't do this last one. So if that growth is going to continue, then it would need to be increased in July. We, we don't really know if they have plans to freeze the dividend because of their shrinking profits that they need in order to pay down their debt from the Fox acquisition, which by the way has left them with a pretty weak balance sheet as you can see on this chart here. But all of that is still kind of speculation. So we really need to wait until July to see if they increase the dividend for, I guess that would be an 11th straight year. But um, anyway, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. But I, I really, I personally do hope that they continue increasing the dividend because that was also a big reason why I personally invested in them. In any case, I think the question for me personally is really, does Disney deserve to be trading 
at these higher prices at this current valuation and for about a 20 percent premium to the sector at least like on a forward p basis well I think when you consider how big the company is, how strong their brands are, and their newly added future potential, especially in video streaming, yeah, I kinda do think that they deserve to trade for a premium because this isn't the, the old Disney company that we're talking about. They're still as solid as they've ever been in terms of a company and being reliable and all that kind of stuff, but they now have newly added growth. And so I think that growth does deserve a little bit of a premium. Having said that, do I really want to be adding to my position when it's already my third largest stock and the stock is trading at these you know, near record highs and the stock market is trading basically at record highs? Do I really want to be adding to my already third largest stock in my entire portfolio? Well, no, not really, not at this current valuation. Now, if the stock was to dip at all, yeah, I would like to add to it. But in terms of, holding this stock into the future or selling it right now, I'd, I'd much rather just hold it into the future because again, this is still a very foundational kind of core position for my portfolio that I aim to really hold for many years into the future unless something drastically changes with the company. I mean, I could envision myself holding this stock until I retire and the same goes for my other two core positions which are Microsoft and Amazon. I feel the same way. Now, if uh, you were to ask me, well, if you were not currently invested in Disney, would you be buying Disney stock right now? Well, I think I probably would, but it would be a very small amount that I'd be buying. Like I definitely would not be buying Disney heavy right now because I'm the type of investor who likes to buy stocks when they're going down, not when they're trading near record highs and at some of their highest valuations. So for me, Disney stock is a little too expensive right now, even though I do think that uh, they do deserve to trade for premium, but they're still pretty expensive. So if I wasn't in the stock, yeah, may maybe I would pick up a little tiny position, but then I would just look to add to it in the future on any dips. And if I was to kind of miss the boat on it, like if I was scared of missing the boat, oh, I gotta buy it now because I might miss the boat, I wouldn't worry about that because there's always going to be market corrections, market crashes. Even if Disney was to perform incredibly well into the future and doesn't really dip on its own, which I think is unlikely, I think it will eventually, something will, will kind of go wrong in the future, whether Wall Street freaks out about, about profitability or whatever else other case it is, they'll have one bad uh, earnings or something and it'll kind of dip. But even if they didn't, even if they were like perfect and they never dipped, eventually the stock market will drag it down along with it the macro economy will eventually we have to go through recession so i'm not someone who ever thinks that oh i have to buy this stock because i might miss the boat i always know that there's future opportunities coming so i can be patient and right now with the stock market trading at record highs i think patience is key and i think being very selective is also key anyway those are just my opinions uh, who cares what i think guys uh, it's, it's ultimately your decision to make whatever whatever you decide to do. Uh, you should always do your own research and make your own decisions. Don't copy me. That is a horrible idea. Don't ever, please don't ever, ever, ever copy me. But uh, anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section. So please leave them down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting the like button because it really helps support the channel and it means a lot to me. But uh, with all that said, uh, thank you for all the support. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.